Good day, I hope you are well. Today, we will be talking about frame structures. Here are the key things we'll be learning about. We'll start by understanding what structures are and learn about different types and where we find them. We'll dive into the world of frame structures, figuring out what makes them tick and why they're so important in construction. We'll have a closer look at roof trusses, breaking down their components like king and queen posts, struts, ties, rafters, and tie beams. We will have time to weigh the pros and cons. We'll check out why steel is cool and why wood has its own charm in frame structures. So, buckle up everyone. We're in for an exciting journey exploring the nuts and bolts of frame structures and understanding how they shape the world around us. People make and build many different kinds of things, such as houses, motor cars, roads, and dams. We also make items like bottles, clothes, books, and furniture. Structures can be natural or human-made. There are three types of structures solid structures, shell structures and frame structures. A solid structure is solid, usually strong, and can support relatively heavy loads. Some things, like forks, spoons and knives, are solid objects that consist of one part only. Advantages of solid structures are that they are held in place by their own weight. Losing small parts often has little effect on the overall strength of the structure. Mountains, caves, and coral reefs are natural mass structures. Sand castles, dams, and brick walls are manufactured mass structures. Shell structures are structures that contain or protect things from the outside and are usually hollow inside. A shell structure is more enclosing than a frame structure, it surrounds and encloses something. Bottles, pots, and water tanks are hollow objects that can also be called shells. Frame structures are structures that are made of rigid parts joined together to form a framework. There are two main forces that these structures experience, compression and tension. We also make objects that consist of different parts that are put together, like chairs, tables and bridges. These objects are called frame structures, and it is important to try to make frame structures strong. Frame structures, shell structures or solid structures are built for specific purposes. They support a load. A structure must be able to support its own weight and the load it has to carry without breaking. A load can be a person, an object or a force. A moving load is known as a dynamic load. A stationary load is known as a static load. Structures are used for spanning a gap. Spanning a gap refers to creating a structure that stretches or reaches across an open space, connecting two points. It's like building a bridge between two sides of a river or creating a roof over a large room. Examples of structures spanning a gap include bridges over rivers, walkways connecting two buildings, or beams supporting the roof of a large hall. The goal is to create a secure and reliable connection between two points that might otherwise be separated by an open space. Bridges fulfill another function, supporting a load, they have to carry their own weight and the weight of whatever travels over them. Structures enclose people, animals, or objects. All containers fulfill this function, as well as most buildings. Natural objects include shells and caves. Frame structures are rigid parts are joined together to form a frame structure. The different parts are called members. Frame structures support a load or span a gap. A frame structure is made up of different bars. These bars are joined together to form a framework. The bars make the framework stronger. Frame structures are fairly easy to design. They can also be manufactured cheaply and they can be constructed quickly. They are often used in the construction industry. Many roofs are supported by frame structures called trusses. A roof truss is a framework used for the roof construction of most houses and buildings. It is a base that supports the roof timbers and roof coverings. 
Trusses can be made of wood or steel. The different parts of a truss are called members. Roofs are supported by triangular frame structures called roof trusses. The structural members are usually made of wood or steel. The purposes of the different structural members vary as each member is designed for a specific purpose. Structural members are like the superheroes of a building or any structure. They have three main jobs. Firstly, they withstand forces. Structural members are tough and sturdy. They're designed to handle different types of forces that try to push, pull, or twist a structure. It's like they're the defenders, standing strong against whatever nature throws at them, be it wind, heavy loads, or anything else. Secondly, they are support structures. Imagine a structure as a team, and each member plays a specific role. These structural members are like the pillars and beams that hold everything up. They work together to keep the structure standing tall, ensuring that it doesn't collapse or give in under its own weight. Lastly, members add strength. Think of structural members as the muscles of a structure. They add strength and power, making sure the building doesn't wobble or weaken. It's like they're the backbone, providing the necessary support to keep everything in place. So, in a nutshell, these structural members are the unsung heroes that make sure our buildings and structures are not only standing but standing strong and resilient against whatever challenges they might face. They're the foundation of a solid and reliable structure. We will now identify different members on a roof truss framework. A king post is a vertical member in the middle of a framework attached to the center of a tie beam extending towards the top of the roof truss. A king post is the most commonly used member of a framework. It helps distribute loads evenly. In some truss designs, there are more vertical members. A queen post is another type of roof truss. It has two supporting beams that are attached to a tie beam, it extends towards the top of the roof truss framework. Queen posts enhancing the truss's stability and load-bearing capacity. Imagine you are building a bridge or a roof, and you need to make it strong and stable. In your structure, you have a choice between using queen posts or a king post. Now, let's talk about why you might prefer queen posts. Queen posts come in pairs on either side, providing better stability. It's like having a friend on each side to help hold things up. A strut is a strong member that forms part of a frame structure. It can resist a compression force. A strut holds members of a framework in place by pushing against them. A strut is a diagonal or horizontal member that resists compression forces. Struts help maintain the spacing between vertical members and prevent buckling. A strut must be strong enough to keep apart the two components that are pushing against it. So, a strut performs the opposite function of a tie. A strut is under a compression force. Placing a strut across a joint can make a framework stronger. A strut is used to strengthen an aeroplane's landing gear. A strut is like a strong, supportive leg that helps an airplane's landing gear stay sturdy and safe. Imagine it as the superhero of the landing gear, keeping everything in place. When an airplane is on the ground, its weight pushes down on the earth. Think of it as the airplane saying, Hey earth, I'm here, and I'm heavy. But guess what? The earth doesn't just let the airplane squash it flat. There's an opposing force that pushes back against the weight of the airplane. It's like the earth saying, Hold on, airplane you're not going anywhere. When the airplane's weight pushes down and the earth pushes back up, they create a compression force. This force squeezes the landing gear, kind of like when you press your hands together. The landing gear needs to be strong to handle this pressure. Here's where our superhero strut comes in. The strut is like a tough rod or beam that connects different parts of the landing gear. It helps distribute the compression force evenly, preventing any part of the gear from snapping or collapsing. So,
So, next time you see an airplane's landing gear, remember the strut. It's there to keep the landing gear strong and make sure the airplane stays safe during takeoff, landing, and while parked on the ground. A tie holds or pulls two members of a structure together. A tie must be strong enough to hold together structural members that are pulling away from one another. A framework can be made stronger by joining the members with a tie. The two members each pull the tie towards themselves, so a tie is under a tension force. This causes the tie to appear as if it is being stretched in two directions. Think of a shelf on a wall where you place your TV. Now, the TV is not weightless, it pushes down on the shelf because of gravity. This downward force makes the shelf want to sag or pull away from the wall. To stop the shelf from sagging or pulling away, we use something called a tie, or a diagonal member. We attach one end to the shelf and the other end to the wall. When the TV's weight tries to pull the shelf away from the wall, the tie comes into action. It resists this pull by stretching diagonally. This stretching is what we call a tension force. The tie is like a superhero keeping everything in place, making sure your TV and shelf stay right where they should be, safely attached to the wall. A rafter is a series of parallel beams that are attached to a roof truss framework. They help to shape the roof and support the roof covering. A rafter is one beam in a series of parallel beams. These beams are attached to the frames of a roof truss. Rafters help to shape the roof and they also help to support the roof covering. Rafters inward roof trusses are arranged in a specific way to help form a roof structure's shape. A tie beam is a beam that connects two opposite rafters to form a roof truss. A tie beam rests on two opposite columns. It joins the two diagonal sides of a triangular structure. A tie beam usually connects two opposite rafters to form a roof truss. As we noted earlier, trusses can be made of steel or wood. Advantages of steel roof trusses include are that they are stronger than wood. They are strong but lightweight. Steel trusses carry bigger loads than wood and can withstand strong winds. Some disadvantages of steel trusses are that they are prone to rust and must be treated with anti-rust agents to protect them. Wood roof trusses are cheaper than concrete, lightweight, have good insulating properties and have an attractive natural finish. Disadvantages of roof trusses are that they must be protected against insects and moisture with varnish, and they rot in the presence of water and sunlight. We have come to the end of our lesson today. I hope you learned something. Let's meet again next time for another exciting lesson on technology. Enjoy the rest of your day.